and um, so I shall switch over to the close-up view and we'll have a look right so first off this is this um, banshee I glued together the other day a friend of mine Zach who frequents the 15 mil forum and all the various Battletech ones as well noted that I put him on the wrong way around I put his waist back to front so um, fortunately I was able to sort of pop it apart to fix that um, but otherwise it's kind of together now um, and the base needs some um, work doing on it but overall quite happy with that size wise if we match up against one of these vehicles from Ground Zero Games 15 mil wise um, you can see it's a good size against those in terms of height and um, yeah, it looks about right. I'm sure you could fit a man inside here somewhere sitting with his face up behind where the uh, uh, mask was. Although being N scale, it's probably a bit small. I mean, if you're a purist with your Battletech, um, that's going to look a bit too small um, in terms of size. But generally speaking, looks okay to me for 15 mil gaming, you know, generally. So um, these have been painted up by a friend who's done some weathering and rusting on these flatbeds these are from ground zero games and I was just going to add some dust effects and things to them there's also a little trailer um, John at ground zero games does a this trailer set that goes with these you can buy obviously multiple of these you can either glue the the top piece on or you can leave the trailer open as well I think if you were going to do a set like this um, representing some sort of weapon or stowage that's in there you probably want to mount that on a base rather than just keeping those separate because it's a bit fiddly isn't it if you're going to game with that it'd be easier just to plot that on as a single piece so yeah and um, so I think what I'm going to do because I'm just sort of generally rambling on is I'm going to start out then by doing some extra weathering in here I'm not going to do a lot to them they don't need much um, what I might do is take a, a lighter colour and also do some chipping on them using just, you know, they've had a rusted bit on there, but maybe put some of this radiant platinum colour on there as well. And see how I get on with that. So let me try and see where I can go. Um, what I'm going to do then, so I'll start off, I'll do some, before I do the chipping, I'm going to do some extra weathering on here with just some pigments and, and different materials. So I'm going to start out by making myself a wet palette, which I typically do. So basically my wet palette is just a small one, just so that I can paint while I'm doing these videos. It's just got blotting paper in the bottom, which has been used before. And then a piece of tracing paper on the top, and I've just put it in an old cutout um, piece of plastic from a miniature packet. So just using my Scenic sprayer, which is just water in a spray. It's a handy way of getting uh, the right amount of moisture into the bottom of a wet palette, which just keeps the paint dry. I may not use a lot of it. Um, and then the tracing paper goes in on top to make the wet palette first time you put it in it will peel up and then what I tend to do is sort of push it down a bit and then flip it and well that's about as best as I can be bothered uh, that's then ready to put some paint in if I want to use it so wet palette out of the way I shall start probably using paints that don't need the wet palette to be fair um, but let's have a look I've got this here which is kerosene like a blue wash from life color I reckon that's going to look quite interesting on the on the back of the flatbed and possibly some smoke as well in there I have another one which they do which is like an oil spill there it is which is great for sort of spotting on oil. You can see, look, it's even some reason of all these paints. It's the one I've spilled, and of course, it looks like oil spilled down the side of it. So, yeah, it's bright blue. 
I'll get a medium sized brush. And we'll just see what that does on the back of these. Zooming in. They've also, they've been varnished, but there's kind of a little bit of a gloss on the varnish. So once they've been fully dull coated, that'll tone them down. So. Can I just put some in the back there and just, uh, obviously like it's been a spillage, something, something's been in that uh, back that's caused this to spill. Don't necessarily have to do in the other one, but I do a small one in the other one. So that's cheap and cheerful and quick, isn't it? That's kerosene, but I have used it quite a lot before in other models, and it is quite nice um, to just drop in there. I'm going to use the hairdryer now to uh, just blast these dry. So yeah, sorry about the noise. It's still drying in there. Just speeds this process up while I'm live, and I don't normally do. I'd normally just leave things to dry, but um, yeah, it's still just drying out on there. But it just just looked like a stain, so and you can just see it's drying a little bit, so there's a bit of shine on it. The other ones to use here is maybe some smoke. Which is really just a just a thin black wash again. But it's it's got some pigment in it. Um, which you could just I can just go put along the bottom of some of the uh, panels on the side. Just to look like dirt and grime. Even though it's got that dirty and grimy look already. Just adds a bit more definition to it. Not going to go everywhere like a total pin wash across the whole lot, but just enough to make it look like there's some dirt and grime on there. Maybe down the back. And again into the uh, into the flatbed. Maybe particularly around the back where there's been a lot of stuff thrown in and out. Just going, I mean, conveniently, John at Ground Zero Games has made these so that the, um, it's got very, very strong panel lines from this, um, from the framework of the, of the truck. There's some, maybe some black around some of those grill bits around the back near the windows. Windows. Windscreen, even. So that's slowly dirtying it up. Come over to the other one while that one's drying. Do the same, go along the side panels in the wheels. One of the things I'm going to do in the wheels once this is dried, um, I'm going to put some dust in there. And uh, that's another life color paint, although you could use dust pigments as well. It's uh, the benefit of making them look like the uh, dirt has dried into the uh, rubber of the yeah, dirt has dried into the rubber on the on the tires. As I say, I don't want to go over overboard with this. I'm just sort of making it look a little bit more grimy and mucky than it is already. And this stuff uh, from Life Colour does dry um, in a 
kind of forgiving way so it doesn't um, overly darken anything you're working on. Yes, if you make a little mistake, it's not the end of the world. And one thing that is, is good with these, which I've seen work before, which I'll try here. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but they combine well together. So let's say you use the um, this sort of dust colour. It goes over some of these bits, like the, the oils, really well. So you can end up with a... If you've ever seen it when oil's leaked out of something and then dust has gone on it, um, that can look quite nice. Not seeing any chat at the moment here, but let's have a look. I think Graham's, Graham's come in. And Claire didn't realize enemy made 15 mil battle mix. Well, yeah, loads of people make them. Um, loads of people make them. I mean, you can even buy the museum scale classic um, Battletech models. Still from Ralpatha Europe or Ironwing Metals, and they, if you look at on their website Ralpatha and look at museum scale, they're just about right for 15 mil. And I've got quite a few things to uh, to put together in that scale. So oh, I didn't really go on the. Uh, I should do that as well. Dirty up the trailer a bit. It's got some hatches and things on there. And I do have the other ones of these. With I do have another one of these somewhere with the um, with the lid off. I don't know where to put that. So in other news this week, I was uh, poisoned. I don't know how that happened. It's an exciting experience. But I um, had a Taiwanese meal and um, nearly killed me. I think I had one of those shocks to, and it's been building up because I'd eaten at this restaurant before and felt unwell, but not sort of put it down to um, a reaction to something in the food. I don't know, sesame or lemongrass, something in there anyway. And yeah, I've been sort of unwell with that for a few days and kept meaning to do a stream, but... Um, Still recovering from it now. I feel like I'm poison still in there. Although obviously it wasn't a poison, it's just a food type that my body considers a poison. So that's a dirtied up back thing there. So not a nice experience. I always had like minor allergies to things, but you know, I'm nearly 50 and I thought uh, I'd got over any, I'd got through life without any kind of major peanut allergies or anything like that, but obviously it got to me. Yeah, Graham, yes, go and look at railpathyeurope.co.uk and um, type in museum scale. They'll be hidden away in some dark under passage of their website, probably with really bad photos, um, but they're, uh, they're good. So, so far those have been going on like light washes and just sort of dirtying up these vehicles. Move in a bit more so you can see some of the results on there. So it's just sort of built up grime in those side panels. It's done it in a kind of generally subtle way. You can see the flatbeds look like stuff spilled in there. There's that big blue streak of the kerosene that's gone across. And um, yeah, again, side panels, I've just put some in there. And on the front, around those vents. So this is the oil, now this is interesting stuff. Dry brush metallics for scrapes. Yeah, that's what I've got, that was the plan. I've got um, this paint here, Radiant Platinum, um, which I was just gonna put some little dings and bits with silvery bits on the edges. So oil, so what's interesting about this is you wanna put it on like it's real, like blobs of oil. It's kind of got that 
browny black oily look to it and it is actually quite oily stuff so i don't know whether i should be using a bigger brush or just dropping it on but i'll show you what i mean by this when it goes in the back here you can kind of do pools with it basically so again i'm not using the wet palette for this i'm just sort of blobbing this on Going on a bit too much heavy there, actually. A bit too much heavy. I'm going on too heavy. But that'll dry out flat and it will just keep its colour. It's not, uh, it's less, um, it's more opaque than the the other washes like the smoke and the, and the kerosene colour that's gone on. Uh, you can see the kerosene in the back there. And uh, it will look like dotted blobby oil. Um, I probably just went on a bit too heavy. So I've got my eye in here. I'm just kind of like um, I haven't got my magnifier. I'm just sort of blobbing things in. And actually, if it's too small, you can barely see it anyway, can't you? I mean, the same sort of speckling I could do on the hood. Anywhere you like, really, but it is, it's, uh, it really holds its sort of shape. Something about the way they put the, the acrylic and the pigment together in there, you do end up with something that looks like a, an oil spill. Um, or an oily mess. So that's uh, that's the oil. The burnt brown is interesting for two reasons. One, it's a great wash for very being really subtle. Um, you know, like you got your Griffin sepias from um, Games Workshop and the various other newer uh, variants, known oils and things that they've got. Well, this is um, a lot thinner than that, and you can see it's almost like a it's a very thin wash. But the second reason it's interesting is that it stinks. Oh, I don't know why it smells like old fish, but it must be... It's the only pot I've ever had, so it may have gone off, actually. I've had it for a few years now. But it, it does stink like old fish. Now, if I had the new YouTube plug-in for um, Smelly Vision, you'd get a real stink off that. So I probably need a bigger brush for that. But yes, I can just sort of put some in the back here as well. It really is nearly like clear liquid, but for some odd reason it uh, it does it does give you a nice subtle wash in areas that haven't had any wash and it kind of blends in any any rubbish that you've done as well. When I say rubbish, I just mean areas that maybe you put too high a contrast or you want to cover up a little bit of detail, but still weather and on a vehicle like this it just looks like more sort of dirt's got on there really so they're my kind of go-to weathering set really um, they do do a lot more the life color paints range that um, they're quick and easy to do Fortunately with these, of course, this is the last stage on these vehicles. Everything else has been nicely done already. It's just sort of making them sort of look even more weathered and worn in. So these ones in particular are from Ground Zero Games in their new range of models that are um, 3D designed originally before they're cast in metal. These are hard metal models. And um, they go together really cleanly. There's a real flush fit to them. They're also, although they don't, I mean, they look like modern, don't they? They look like maybe a Land Rover, Range Rover type thing. 
with the, and, and John's even done them in the different wheelbases, just like the, uh, the its real life counterpart. But um, they still look interestingly sci-fi, and the panel work on the sides great, uh, great for weathering as well because it's kind of very forgiving. It just takes your washes into those areas and uh, and deals with that for you, so you're not having to deal with a lot of big open flat spaces. And um, I like them because I think they look they look universal. They could be on Mars, they could be anywhere interplanetary, they could be near future, they could be near past sort of thing, alternative past. And um, even though they've got um, these small wheels and then you kind of, sometimes again you look at these and you think, oh, to make them more sci-fi they can have a really big fat chunky wheel, but I, I like them as they are. Right, so now I've done the sort of quick weathering job on these, lightning fast. Oh, you must get your GZG trucks built. Yeah, definitely. The longer they're in the drawer, the longer you uh, you end up... Uh, I was going to say, without them being painted, but you know, yeah, get them out and do them. I don't know how noisy, I, I am wondering, can you still hear me talk while I use the hairdryer? So I'm trying that. And hopefully they'll be drying off before our very eyes. Yes. It could be a medium or heavy body that they've used to give it bulk. Give what bulk? The, the tank or the, the truck? So now slightly warm in my hand. Let's get it in focus. It still has a sort of slightly glossy look from the varnish that had gone on it before, which will be dull coated down. And um, you can see now, as I said, that oil, in many ways, that oil um, weathering stuff from the Tenzo chrome range from Life Color, this stuff here. It's almost like you put it on after you varnish, because look, it has that kind of even has that glossy, slick look like oil splatter compared to the kerosene that's much more um, subtly washed in there along with the smoke. But you can see that it's gone along the bottom panels there with the smoke colour. Uh, I'll put some around that back window. It just looks like grime again. And then the smaller guy. kerosene stain, a little oil splatter that I did there. So one of the things I had in mind for these was um, to build insert bits of plastic card. So with like weapon mounts or stowage, so I'd literally cut these out to match the size and then build a mini scene. So it might be um, a mortar mounted one of the Ground Zero Games ones, or just a selection of stowage, and then I could sort of interchange them and pop them in and out. So I've got another set of these on uh, in production, and they are um, going to be in like a more of a, a dark green um, camo-y sort of style as well, so slightly more military, and these are a bit more kind of could be civilian or military support vehicles. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's drying off nicely on there, and you can see it's a, quite a subtle weathering result on there. Still a bit wet in the back. So, uh, so now I'm going to show like a quick tip in the middle of this and that's that I've got an old pot of paint here, private press, and the lid has cracked. So I've got a technique, just move those out of the way. Because this privateer press paint, for some reason it lasts forever, I don't know what they've made it from, but something that's um, incredibly stable. 
the lick. The, the lids go before everything else. And obviously I could survive with this lid um, as it is, but I do really like these paints. And so I found online, and when I dig it out, I'll put the link in the description, but I found these on a UK website. And um, they're brilliant because they're plastic, but they're back to normal again, as in it's not cracked. It's all like, I don't know how long it'll last me, but... Uh, you can then replace what you've got on here. So the way to do that is um, just to cut down this ring, which tends to crack because it's gone fragile. I don't know if it's UV that's done that to this plastic, but the bottle's obviously still flexible, but whatever material that's made out of, it's no good. So well, there's a bit of paint left in the top, which I'll probably use that now. And then you just slip the, the ring over the top And, uh, and you're away. Pop it over. Perfect new pot of paint. So, have I got a. I don't know if I've even got a. Um, I should put a steel ball bearing in there that I have to hand as well for a shaker, agitator. So, yeah, sort of good as new, really. Throw away. Hmm, ruin the environment with the old plastic. And then uh, I've sorted that out. So I shall, though, use what I've got here rather than uh, and use that before I throw this bit of plastic away. Look, there's a there's a chunk of paint in there which I can sort of gunk off onto this paper towel, ready for doing some sort of chipping, silvery bits on the on the vehicles. I don't want to do a lot though. So let's zoom in to that. So I could be really subtle with this, or I could just sort of go along a couple of edges that look like they've got weathered and, and scratched on the back just by drawing it over the, a couple of the panels against the edges of there. Maybe around the sort of door handles and things. Don't want to do it a lot, but just enough to give it a little bit of extra detail. If I was really going to town on the detail, I could um, I could detail out the warp, the the rust by putting some more oranginess into a couple of spots of rust to make it look like old rust as well as sort of the fresh rust. But I'm not going to bother. Yeah, and this brush has hardly got any of the stuff on there anymore, so um, that's the way to do it, really, because you don't want a lot of this suddenly appearing on the model. Of course, what you can do is then go back on with the sort of weathering stuff as well. So that's probably enough. I wasn't going to do a huge amount of that on there. Get a bit more of the uh, the dry stuff off the... Obviously, you would do the tow bar. Hatch handles. Maybe the corners. I 
And that will be dulled down again if I um, put a little bit more of the old um, Tester's Dull Coat spray when I finish these, that will dull them down. So yeah, you could go really to town if you wanted to do that a lot, but uh, I'm not too worried about doing that too much. And the other guy here. Of course, it depends what you're going for. You could say that, uh, you know, if this was a far future vehicle, it wouldn't necessarily, you know, whatever materials it's made out of might actually not weather in this way. But uh, it looks okay. You can't go wrong with weathering as long as you don't go too far on it. Yeah. So I think that's that for the, uh, so as I said, I did that repair job, didn't I, on the uh, Radiant Platinum pot and my old bit now, just throw that in the bin, obviously. But I've been doing that with most of my privateer press paints. They're such good quality paints, um, last for years. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Anyway, um, let's have another look at doing some maybe some dust weathering, which I might need to thin down a bit, and maybe some pigments as well. Now I've got this stuff here. This is, that's like a kind of a brownie color. That will look like a good dirt going out the side. And then this dust, which is kind of a fine dust, which I can put on the, the tires. And I'll show you that technique. So let's get some of that out of there. Worry about that later. Decant that into a little pot because I want to thin it down to the right consistency. Otherwise you'll end up painting a black tire and it's just going to look, hmm, it's kind of junky anyway, isn't it? But yeah, I'm just decanting that out of there with a brush. I mean that's more than more than enough for a few tires. Clean that brush out totally. Yeah, so this is like a, a powdery wash again from Life Color Diorama series. Dust type two. Uh, I can't remember what dust type one is. Yeah, I've got that somewhere or other. Don't know where it is. But um what I obviously want to do with this is make it like a really thin wash. So I'm just going to get my spray and just put a bit of water in there. Thin it down. I could, th I could thin it with a, like a glaze medium, but I don't want it to go on. I do want it to go on quite watery. So a little bit more water. Now that's really nice and thin in there now. So that's not going to cause me too much of a problem in terms of coating the models. So I'm ruining a brush up there. It is annoying when you find a brush that's one of your good ones and it's somehow been splayed. Um, but I'll wrap that for now. Yes, I'm going to use a thin brush for this because it's going to go on almost like a pin wash. And um, let's go in close then. Oh, it's actually focused. So if you see around the tyres, obviously, we've got tread. Um, you just wash it on there. It's meant to look like... Um, old dust that's gathered in the tyre tread, and you can put it in the... Um, you can put it inside the wheel hub as well.
again the reasons to try and be sort of subtle with it is obviously these paints and things are designed for large 135th scale kind of models and um, as a result some of these techniques at 15 mil scale don't always look quite as realistic but you can um, you can go back once you've got the dusty effect on the tyre there and once that's dried in a bit more you can go back and then do a bit of that kind of wash with like the smoke wash or something again and um, you'll end up making it look nice and sort of dirty rather than maybe too bright like it's just gone through some fresh snow but it does highlight nicely the kind of just adds a little bit of extra definition to these uh, nice tires Oh yeah. Look at that, I managed to look how I wrote thanks for the comment. I've got this thing here beside me called a stream deck and it allows me to program in some macros. So just so you know, I didn't type thanks for the comment, but thanks to uh, David Knight for saying that uh, he's enjoying the video anyway. And I was able to press a single button to make that happen, which just feels good. Oops. Yeah, so you can go really quick with these. Like I was going a bit slowly doing that before, but just um, goes into the tire treads. It looks like dried dirt. It's one of those things again that uh, it's worth mentioning actually the difference between hobby modelers and war gamers is that the hobby modeler will be going for ultra realism so they might say oh well this is a tank in Vietnam and therefore the dust that's come off the road has the reddish color and there's no way I'm going to paint this tank with like a light colored dust on the tires or something because um, because it doesn't match the theatre of war that this vehicle was used in that I'm modelling. Whereas a war gamer, which I find for myself anyway, I just tend to just go for the technique that I'm after rather than going, oh, in particular, I can't really use this dust because it wouldn't be suitable for the environment on planet Mars or whatever it happens to be on at the time. So, um, so yeah, I'm losing some of the, the zoom in there. Yeah, you can see there that the tread's looking nice and when that's dried and it's had maybe a little bit more of a smoke wash or a dust on there it's uh it's going to bring them up nicely and there's no harm in like i said putting a bit of dust inside the uh the wheels as well uh, although it's kind of counterintuitive isn't it to do a light wash on a dark um area um normally as war gamers we're putting um we're putting darker washes on to give something a a decent highlight. Yeah, you don't have to be like exacting with this as well. You could, you know, one one time I splashed in through some mud, and another one um, went through a puddle shortly afterwards or something and cleaned it off. So not everything has to look exactly the same. Yeah, coming back to that war gamer versus sort of um, hobby modeler that um, you would potentially be more concerned about very specific um, colours used and um, obviously with these guys I'm being kind of selected this dust and I'm not worried about where, what theatre of war they happen to be in I just want the dust to give it a result that I'm after hmm. oh wow that's that's gone on heavy there hasn't it on the front there so, put some more on that side. Uh, 
and again could put some up in front of the front grill like dust and sand has got in there even higher up splashed up some mud They almost look like Lego wheels, if you know those rubbery Lego wheels, but they're not. They are the 3D um, printed and then cast up uh, ones that John now does on his uh, models. And the other thing with, uh, you know, if you've got the patience to just keep going with this sort of stuff, is that um, it's about layering as well in the sense that, you you know, you've done some darker washes on there, but there's no harm in, like, putting another light dusty wash on top Talking about uh, the the worst, um, you know, just my you know pet hates really now, and uh, one of those is um, snow and snow theme models. And I know the the game Frostgrave became very popular, and it just meant that everybody wanted a snowy a snowy scene. But I remember at a war game show many years ago, someone had done a um, snowy uh, like a Napoleonic game. And it looked like the most amazing sort of Christmas scene you'd ever seen, really. It was perfect as a terrain, but, you know, a big eight foot long snowy scene would look, looked amazing. But um, because of the way the models looked against the high contrast, it was nearly impossible to um, nearly impossible to see anything because your eyes couldn't deal with the, the strong contrast. You know, black ants against white snow, and uh, I—it's—it's it's a—it's just one of those things. I don't think snowy, big, large snowy scenes look great, and very hard to make look good. And if anything, I prefer—and I have seen this done as well—a a terrain scene where you might get patches of snow and ice rather than full on uh, a full on snow scene I think it's a physical impossibility to actually properly make a you know even a 15 or a 28 mil model look good um, with such high contrast from a distance you know like the model sat there with a bright white base from the snow and then um, and then in whatever colour the model happens to be in stark contrast to the the, the, uh, the snow, it's uh, it's just quite a tough thing to achieve. That in good, I've seen it done well though. I have seen it done well, but uh, tend to avoid it. And the other thing is um, scale model one thirty fifth scale. If people do um, um, the snow camo, um, it just doesn't look right. And of course, it was whatever the Germans when they went. East just repainted green tanks or whatever with with some snow camo and, and it was all rough and ready f done in the field and it wore off uh, leaving that kind of worn look but it just doesn't look um, you know just it doesn't look cool I think is probably the word I'm trying to say so it's hard to make it look stunning but it's hard to make it look it's easy to make it look as it was with that kind of dusted white against the uh, undercolor but uh, it's equally just doesn't look as, as cool as a clean tank with sort of muddy weathering on it or something. So you can see how it sort of adds a kind of shade. It looks like muck's built up in there. And now it's drying off on those wheels. It's beginning to look a little bit dirty and grimy. You can see now, it's actually allowed you to get a little bit of, you can see your eye can now see the definition and you can see the roundness on that on that tyre. It's quite a nice feature of the model. 
Actually, on the subject of tyres, get the um, got a couple of Ground Zero games motorbikes, and they've got amazing wheels. Pop them out while I'm here. Check out those studs on those tyres. Very nice. And um, yeah, these are from Ground Zero Games. They're sort of biker models. Now, half of mine actually I've got three sets of these, and I mean half of mine to base them two to a base, sort of one leaning one way, and maybe one sort of heading forward on on a base to sort of make them easier to move. These are the new bikes from GZG. Yeah, uh, again, three D printed, so you can see all the way around. All the way around, there's detail on them. And the the wheels are great. So if you do those in a really st strong black, and then dusted up them a bit, they could look quite rugged. Yeah, they're nice. I wonder if one of those would fit in the back of the. Hmm, not really. But yeah, very nice those, and they just give you an, an idea of how a three D printed model that's cast in in metal can look. So I'm going to go back on these with some of this brown over the the wheels now. Muddy them up even more now that the dust's sort of dried on there. Use a reasonably sized brush for that. It's just going to tone down the, the dust a bit and make it look a little bit more muddy, but still leave some of it showing through. Carefully manoeuvring this in my hand to drop some of that on. And the final thing I will do is put some of the uh, dust on there, the dust, the proper um, pigment, just to see how that comes out. Yeah, this is the ten. This is the burnt brown colour. Whoops, too much in there. That's like kind of like a very muddy wheel now. So, back to this guy. You can see how the dust's gone into the back there as well, over that silvered bit that I did earlier. This 
So that's that lot. So what shall I do? Shall I blast it with the hairdryer? I think I will just quickly. It's going to get noisy. Models are getting a bit warm there. So yeah, how are they looking? Obviously I'm at a distance here, so that's always the best way to look at my models from a distance. I can't really see the terrible detail, but they've got the um, um, nice sort of muddy sprayed up at the front look there going on. Slightly weathered and beaten in the, in the flatbed bit. Dusty looking wheels. So let's see how it stands up under close scrutiny. Yeah, mucky looking. And there's the oil you can see is in the back there. It's going to lose that shine that makes it look pretty interesting uh, when the dull coat goes on it, um, which is another sort of thing to discuss at some point, really, isn't it? There's so many paints that don't look as good once you've dull coated them, but uh, that being one, this oil drop one. And then the trailer. You can see how the dust has gone into the uh, the grooves there. And on the back. A decal or something there would be interesting, wouldn't it? A company logo or something. Ah, funny that Scram just happened to mention that. No, I, I didn't think I would, but... I know what you mean, though. It probably does need one. And I should now look. Let's see if I can find the decals. Handy. Let me go and look for those. Be right back in any minute. Yes, I've got this box of uh, various decals I've used over the years. I don't know what I'd really put on there. Well, that's quite nice, that. Oops, dropped something, but maybe a number, plus uh, one of these weird stripes. Hmm. I wonder where I'd put the number on the roofs, maybe? Let's have a look if that sort of fits. Yeah, that, would, that might work. That might work. Yeah, so I'm gonna get some of those out. I'm also thinking colour-wise, the striking yellow with the black would be nice on there. Um, this one's got more sci-fi sort of feel to it. But, uh, we've got some of these heavy gear ones here as well. But they have some smaller numbers. Perhaps I'll pop some of those into the into the pot as well. Now looking for a little place to drop some decals in. Um, water slide, so that'll probably do. I don't think I've even ever opened these heavy gear decals. Mm, not very big, but not that you want them very big. Zoom into that, then I'll I'll cut some up. I 
was thinking I like these quite big numbers. So I'm going to cut those out with my big scissors. These are tri-tool scissors from Hasegawa, Japanese company. And they're actually made for just this job, cutting out water slide decals. And they're nice. I mean, it's nice having that good control that comes with the, the big scoop outs and the very fine nib. But I've been abusing them over the years. I think I've even got glue and things on there. So those numbers. In fact, I want probably two of the lightning flash kind of shields in there too. And now I'll take a couple of these maybe warning stripes and things from the uh, sets. Then those are Bandai, obviously these ones, but uh, these guys are from Heavy Gear. So just cutting that to size. It's not going to look very in focus because it's not enough to focus on. Obviously, you, you, because you want the minimal amount of the sl the slide material, the you want to cut it as close to the actual decal that you can get. Yeah, so I don't want that sort of blank material on the model there, so, so trim it along the edge. Same goes for there, I've got a bit closer. It's all about the preparation. Oops. Yes, I don't know if you've joined this stream late or, or, or what, it's just a Saturday afternoon and I'm in the UK and I'm just doing some general sort of bits and pieces on some 15mm models and rather than doing it on my own I thought I'd stream the activity, it's always handy being told. Yeah look Graham's just created some extra work for me doing the decals but now when he said it I thought yeah what do these models need? They probably need a couple of stickers on them kind of thing so why not do it? You can see Incredible skill required to cut out things. The hands are feeling a bit clumsy actually. So that's one done. The other one's done. And that one just needs the edge trimmed off. There's another number down there. That's a handy thing sometimes with these is that the moistness on your hands can uh, help you pick up these tiny things. So I've got two numbers, two shields, and I, th I fancy the idea that I'm going to put the shields on the on the hood on the front of the vehicle, the bonnet. And um, so what are these other small ones here? Just more numbers. I don't know if I really like those now. I'll look at them closer. I don't know these different um, these different factions and things from this game, Heavy Gear. But I could put that into the flatbed at the back, and then even the arrow thing could go in the back. Let's just see how it pans out. As with the other ones, I don't want all the extra paper material, just want the uh, image. accidentally trimmed off some of the, the number but I'll leave it as it is. So the next thing to do with this is just to use a very small amount of water because you don't need to put these into a big pool of water they just need enough to um, start to absorb the moisture. So 
So that's them in their water. You can add some softener to that and um, add some around. Yeah, this stuff, the micro set softener, and you can add that to the water. I think it kind of breaks the surface tension or something and maybe starts them softening a bit more. Don't know how, how much that helps, but you can also paint this microsol on to the vehicle where you're going to put that on and it will start softening the uh, the decal very quickly as well. So get rid of all my the junk out of the way. Call yourself a mini builder and painter, where's the blood? The blood. There's definitely sweat and tears. <laughs> so look, I'm going to try this. I'm going to say, presses the button. Thanks for the comment. Thanks, Matthew. So yeah, that's just moistening away there. What else can I say about it? But um, in a moment, it's going to be ready to go on. The models and I'm going to use a brush to do that a thin brush so I thought numbers would go on the on the top is it coming apart yet no they just need a few extra moments where the uh, water soaks into the underside oh that one's free is it free no not yet fishing for decals by Robin oh I've torn that one oh. Be a little bit more careful. And the reason that's torn is probably because I put that softener on. Oh, it's a bad move. Schoolboy error. This one's now coming apart though. Normally I wouldn't do this staring like this forever. I'd leave them in the corner and get on with something else. <laughs> but I'm trying to make them hurry up, so sorry about people viewing this. It's always bad when you use knives and scissors. Oh yeah, of course. The deadly Hasegawa scissors, yeah. No, I think I've mentioned on previous streams that um, uh, now I even use one of these with a brand new scalpel. And I will even cut towards me on some strong metal and they don't penetrate the skin anymore. Uh, just happens over the years practice don't ask me why that, work, that that works out for me but for some reason I just yeah don't get cut by uh, those blades anymore I think it's just from experience of um, knowing how hard I can push against the skin when I'm cleaning up a model right let's zoom into this now because I think that one's nearly ready because I'm fussing about with them And yeah, I can see that one's become free of its paper paper location and it's trying to fold itself up so when it you'll notice the careful brush play to get the brush into a position where I don't want it folding up too much because uh, there you go look. So yeah, I'm gonna put it on the top. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that location. I'm not even going to touch it. Sometimes you can be lucky with that. You can you can literally just um, drop a decal on, and it will be in the right place. Oh, I took that one off screen. Sorry. That's and this one hasn't gone on in place, so I need to tease it around a bit by using the moist brush. So there they are. And then unfortunately I nearly destroyed one of these ones earlier. Get it back into the frame. Oh, it's 
retrieving like it wants to escape me. There we go, lifted. It's just out of your view, unfortunately, but there you go. Perfect. So there's a lot of water on the brush, and it just means I can um, tease it around. To get it somewhere that's half decent. Get the other one that's slightly damaged, unfortunately. But... Uh, so what, we'll get the slightly damaged one and put it on the other one. Someone's going to tell me there's an amazing technique to get these out without damaging them, but... Uh, I say this is just the way I do it. Take my time with it. Because they are, tend to be quite fragile things. You can pull um, some of the water off. to help them settle into place. Oh my goodness, nearly pulled the whole lot off. So one thing I'm going to do with them is I'm going to use Microsol, which is the softener for decals, and it gives them that flat painted on look. So you have to let the water dry first because if you don't if you just go straight on with this it's like more water they'll lift off and they go all over the place but I'm interested to see these other decals that I've got in here these ones that I was going to put in the in the flatbed area which have already weathered of course which is a shame but let's see how I get on with it yeah this one's wrinkled up this is not good I'm going to go back in the water with it, and you can't even see what I'm doing there anyway, so I might zoom out a bit. Yeah, this one suffers that whole... It's quite a large piece. It, uh, it wants to fold up on the brush. So you're going to have to roll it out from the brush onto the vehicle, which I've done, but it's fragile. And I quite like the way it's kind of worked itself into that corner there, actually, anyway. So I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to do repeat on the other one. If I can find the other one of these decals in here. Just had a look at my mark saw. You brush it onto the location with decal. Yeah, that's that's this one. You brush onto the location. The micro set. At least it says that. Brush micro set onto the model where the decal is to be applied. So I didn't do that. Great. And then this one. How I've always used it anyway. Is I just put, put it on multiple times. Um, and eventually the, um, the decal will just flatten completely. You put that on about three or four times over the um, location when you've put it on the uh, model. Oh, there's the other one of these ones that I'm going to put in the back of the other one. Slowly teases it off. Ah, oh, there you go. Got it on. Flat. In the flatbed. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it there as well. So at this point, I won't be hitting them with the... Um, I won't hit them hard with the hairdryer because that might cause these to sort of peel off. And you can see a lot of water's got into the back of there that needs to dry off. What you can do is um, use a brush, a dry brush, and just go around the decals to draw off the moisture. So 
the ones at the front actually are all, all mostly dry, I think. And that's just uh, trying to pull off some more of that paint. Probably use a bigger brush to do pour off, pull off more of the moisture. It is Graham. Is it? It's the same instructions, and I'm wondering whether they just did them in blue once, and then another time did them in red. But they've always had blue microsole, red microsole, and the other one that they do, which is another blue one, which has the a matte um, varnish, which is just a varnish a dull coat to go over the top to again make them look like they're more part of the model. So, right, those are on there, so let's start using the Microsol now. So they've dried out mostly. And this is actually quite a time-consuming thing to do traditionally, but um, you just get a little bit of moistness of it on the back of the brush, drop it onto the decal, and then leave it. And what you want to be careful with is that when you put it on, that you don't fuss too much because you'll pull off the uh, you'll pull off the decal. And what it does is it does two things. One, it makes them look more like they're painted on. And the other thing it does is it uh, makes them conform to the model miniature. So if they're on like a flatbed bit like this, they'll um, they'll conform to that much better. And say so when I've done this before, I've often done it, I've often given them four or five drops of this, and I um, mean you can keep on going, because at the moment they look like they stand out quite a lot, but eventually they'll they'll sort of moisten enough. So yes, thank you there, um, Graham. You've really improved my my game today by suggesting we had the decals on there. I didn't put any on the back of the thing though. Maybe I could have done. Yeah. So that's not looking too bad at all, is it? And like I said, um, you just keep coming back with this microsole. And I just drop it, drop a drop on, it will, it will absorb in. There's obviously loads of it gone into the flatbed section there because it's sitting in the um, sitting in there. It's got quite a strong smell to it. It's like it's almost got a very small amount of some kind of some kind of alcohol-y type thing in there that's breaking down the, the back. So you can see now the uh, also the tyres are nicely dried off. So they've had the dust and then they've had a wash on there as well to make them look like the dirt's got in there. You can see a lot of shine off that decal as well. That's going to go away as they dull down with the Microsoft Plus. Um, morning Gaming Lounge. Good day. Good day, more gaming lounge. Thanks for the comment. Oh, I've got another one I can say as well. Thanks for joining. Here it comes. Comment coming up any minute now. Or maybe it doesn't let me spam a comment, even though it's me. Let's try again, pressing the button. Thanks for joining. There we go. Uh, the power of technology. So, I did say I was going to do some dust on these and when I say dust I mean these pigments rather because I've done the kind of dust on the tires but this this could darken up some areas as well but I think I'm gonna leave it I think I've done enough I think I've done enough I think what I need to do is another door of this microsole while we're talking See that? It moved. That is a 
terrible danger of putting this microsole on because it will keep lifting it even though it's thinning it. But as long as you take care, like I wasn't, you, uh, you should be fine. Yeah, when I started it earlier I was just literally dabbing it on, but then I went a bit too vigorous. Got a bit cheeky with the whole application. So let's do um, a slightly different angled view just so you can see them before I say goodbye to them and uh, finish the stream for now and then go and have something to eat. So yeah, sort of massively weathered up, dirty, filthy looking trucks now with a couple of decals. I do need to, um, I do, need to do something to uh, weather down these decals which I will do with just a little bit of a brown wash over them once they're all dried on. And once they've had a varnish coat with a dull coat, it will make them look all uh, part of the deal. And uh, let's just put, put a couple of uh, models out. Put a couple of other models out. And you can just sort of see the scale. So these are the uh, poles from brigade models and I've got these ones on a group base but this RPG is on a single mount and that's actually a penny um, it's a little bit big to go into the back but it does it does fit obviously if you were mounting him as a specific someone that you wanted to look like he was in the back of a technical kind of thing you wouldn't put him on a, a base, like, base like that but you can see scale wise uh, what we're looking at here with these 15 mil models. And they're nicely suited. I mean, again, I mentioned earlier the tyres are quite small, but I think they're just the right size, half body size. And there are those bikes from earlier as well, the uh, GZG ones with a really nice rubbery big tyres because they've been 3D print designed and then cast in metal. So right, that's been 1 hour 19 minutes of live streaming. Um, I'm going to let these dry. I am going to just, while I sign off, just put another dob of um, Microsoft on just to keep that thinning process going on on the decals. And you'll see really, I know it seems to be a lot of work to keep coming back to these, but... Um, the end result is amazing if you've ever seen uh, some really well softened um, decals they really do look like they're painted on. I think I have an example. And I'm going to show you. So yeah, I've got a vehicle with some really painted on decals. So this is an old um, mech, this is an old N-scale um, Orco 1 Hellhound for Battletech. And if you can, I'm going to go so close into this, it's going to be unbelievable. So there we go. If you look at the, the one on the gun there, and also the one on the back, they look, you can't really see, can you, that they've got the seam around them from being a water slide decal and it's probably that one you can sort of see that it's like a coating but not much and that one's pretty much looks like it's painted on as well and that's what happens if you put a load of this um, microsole on your decals they eventually disappear as if they're part of the uh, the model themselves there's one on the top there too and that one's had some of that sort of oil smoke weathered so it's just sort of made it look even more part of the uh, the model. Yeah. So that's that. So let's press this button here. Right, and just say thanks very much for choosing.